Welcome to the Daily Commercial Forum. I am your host, Sandy Moore. There are many teachers and staff in the Lake County School District that go above and beyond the expectations set for their jobs. They go to great lengths to help students become educated and successful adults. Today, we are talking to several people who have been recently recognized for their efforts. Our guests are Lake County nominees of the Florida Department of Education Achievement Award for Outstanding Leadership, Bill Miller, Leesburg High School Principal, and Leah Fisher, Tavares Elementary School Assistant Principal. Also joining us is Teacher of the Year, Norris Aguayo, third grade teacher at Groveland Elementary. Welcome everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Thank you. I want to start out by finding out, explain what exactly for the, the two of you, uh, Leah and Bill, what is the award that you all won? Tell us a little bit about that. How does somebody get nominated for such an <laughs> award? Is this a huge deal? And I, I realize, and I'm just going to say this to start with, I realize that normally uh, in your profession you're probably w humble, but today I'm really going to ask you to just step right out and, <laughs> and brag on yourselves a little bit. So okay. tell us a little bit about it. Okay, um, it all starts with suggestions are given to, to our district officials and over in Tavares, and then the district officials uh, go through those suggestions and determine actually who, what name to submit to the state. So, uh, so then that name is submitted to the state, and then we get a call, a, you know, a few weeks later, saying congratulations, uh, you're the Lake County Principal of the Year, Assistant mm -hmm. Principal of the Year, and you're invited to a really nice uh, event that was held at Epcot this year, yes. where they gathered all the other uh, district winners. So. Um, there was about 25, 30 of us uh, from across the, the, the state that um, got to meet the commissioner, hang out with the commissioner, the new commissioner, Tony yes. Bennett, and we had a forum during the morning, had a nice lunch, we were recognized, and then, uh, then, they, they, uh, then they announced the winner for principal of the year for the entire state and assistant principal of the year for the entire state. Yes. So we got to meet a lot of good folks. Yes, we did. And what do you think it was that set you apart or... or allowed you to each get this award. What do you think that was? I think with, for me, it's being recognized for what I'm doing. We all are very busy. We all do our very best. But it's being recognized. Somebody stepping forward and saying, thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for listening to us. Thank you for helping me with this child or helping me with this parent. Thank you for getting the textbook that I need. Mm -hmm. It's just being recognized that you are going to school every day, you're there, you're dependable, um, they hold me accountable, and once they say that you're dependable, accountable, that you do your very best, it's nice to be recognized for that. Very good. Yes. Yeah, in addition to all the mm -hmm. consistency and the reliability, the dependability, coming to work every day, because yes. it is a tough job, mm -hmm. and the job has gotten increasingly difficult even in the past three, or three to five years uh, with all the accountability measures which are good mm -hmm. um, the job has become extremely difficult um, but in addition with Leesburg High School being a struggling school that it has been for several years and then to see um, the resurrection of Leesburg High School come back uh, I think that that was uh, it was nice for that to be recognized because we have great teachers at Leesburg High School and we have great kids and over the years uh, uh, people didn't always put greatness in Leesburg High School in the same sentence, okay? Mm -hmm. So uh, although we're not where we want to be yet, uh, we're well on our way. So, uh, you know, I need to compliment our kids and our teachers for really stepping up and making the necessary improvements uh, that had to be made. Well, and I have to say, I'm an alumni of Leesburg mm -hmm. High School, graduated mm -hmm. in 1990. And it really is something I, you know, I'm very proud of. I'm proud of our Lake County school system. But you, and you want to believe in your schools, right. and it's really, it hurts when... Even though I don't have kids in high school right now, I do in elementary and, and in middle school, but, but it hurts when you, know, when you hear they're not doing very well. You want them to. You want to cheer on this team. So uh, I really do commend both of you for the things that you've done. Thank you. And I want to talk to you a little bit, Norris. Tell us a little bit about winning Teacher of the Year, mm -hmm. uh, what that meant to you, but why, what was it about you and, and you as a teacher that you think set you apart? Um, I think with me is the relationship that I have with my students. Um, I really get to know every single one of my students and they're all very important to me so that's my my primary goal is to know them as a person 
to know what's going on. Kids have so much going on nowadays and at home, and I want my classroom to be their safe haven. I want them to know that they can t talk to me, they can count on me, um, and I think that really shows when you have that relationship, and then everything else really just falls into place after that um, once you establish those great relationships with your students. I mean, I've been known to cry with kids, I laugh with them, and you know, I just really, really have these conversations. It's not all education, which is obviously that's our goal in the end, but my primary goal is getting to know them. So I really think that's what um, initially set me apart. Um, and I know it's not just me, it's lots of other teachers, but. Well, and, and, I'm, and I have to say as a parent, I know that this sounds silly, but that is so important mm -hmm. to me. I mean, my kids are going to learn so much better if, one, they have a teacher that knows them and likes them mm -hmm. and can figure them out. I've got two totally different kids mm -hmm. who learn differently, who yes. do different things. Right. And when you can figure out, you know, I have a, my oldest child is a little bit of a daydreamer. Mm -hmm. You know, and his right. teachers always say, just have to say, Justin, back on time. Right. <laughs> but they love him and they celebrate him and, and do that. And so that is so important. Tell us a little bit about some of the programs that you've implemented in your in your class. Um, well, the biggest one I think I do is whole brain teaching. Um, I teach my students with lots of gestures. So they are talking and moving and uh, co collaborating all day long with every lesson. I'm really just chunking it, giving little small portions, and then they get up and I tell them, okay, now it's your turn mm -hmm. to teach. So they'll get up and they do this mirror and words and everybody else mimics them and they'll explain what I just explained to them. And it just kind of keeps going throughout the day. And I think that uh, it really helps them to um, just really learn that information. They have gestures with it, so they're learning by seeing it, by hearing it, by doing it. They're just learning all different learning styles and they're working with their teammates. So when you come into my classroom, it's not gonna be a quiet classroom, little rumbunctious at times, but they are on task, they are learning, and those are my expectations. So. And is this a program that you've developed or did you, I mean, not everybody in, in right. third grade teachers necessarily implement this, right? I. Several years ago, I think it was four years ago now, I was just looking online. I like to watch other teachers teach and just kind of grab ideas. Mm -hmm. And uh, I stumbled upon this whole brain teaching. I'm like, wow, that's really neat. So I looked up a um, whenever they were going to do a convention in this area, and they were doing one in Wellington, Florida. So a friend of mine um, and I drove down there for the weekend, and we attended this conference, and it was amazing. So we right away uh, implemented it into the classroom and kind of went from there. I just have continued to grow it and make it better. Every day I learn something new with the program. Um, Kagan Strategies is another one that the county's kind of implementing and using as well, which same thing, kids are collaborating, they're learning together. Um, they just really want to set them up for that college and career and to learn to work with other people. Now, is this a conference that did you, did they pay for the conference for you to go to? You, I was guessing no. you probably did this on your own. I did, I did. Which yeah. is so typical of teachers, <laughs> and I think it's the unsung hero that you have, that teachers really do so much on their own. A am I correct? <laughs> you do. I know, yes, yes, yes. 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 <laughs> I mean, there are evenings that I'm still at school at 8 o'clock and mm -hmm. teachers are still there. And mm -hmm. teachers that are there on the weekend, they give and give and give. They want their best. And when you do hear a school that's not rated as high as you feel they should be or you hear something negative, my heart goes out to them too because you know they're working hard. Mm -hmm. They are working hard. Sometimes they might need a more support from us. Right. Or from the district or from other family, you know, the family members. But teachers always want to do their best. Well, they I, do. Unfortunately, they I think you mm -hmm. hear so much, you know, you, you hear the one teacher yes. maybe who didn't, isn't doing it right. right. But there's so many more on the other hand of that that are. Mm -hmm. Tell me, what do you all think, and this really could be to any of you and, and all of you, what do you think is the biggest challenges that you face right now as an educator, whether it be as a principal or a teacher, an assistant principal? Mm -hmm. um, what do you think that is? I think one of the challenges that, that, that we address every day is, is the use of technology, the use of <laughs> cell phones, the, the, the immediate connection to anywhere in the world. Uh, trying to channel all that energy and uh, with, that cell phones bring, trying to channel that energy uh, is, is, is on top of all the other expectations, uh, putting on a full-time recreational center, uh, making sure we provide all the social events, uh, making sure our chorus programs and our productions and our plays are all smooth and the facilities are all working well. 
you know, on, on top of all of that, um, which, which, you know, takes us away from our focus sometimes. It really does. But it's the ongoing, the ongoing challenge of, of the use of technology and, and what's appropriate, what's not appropriate. Uh, we come into situations where we might correct a student and uh, say somebody is running in the hallway or they're two minutes late to class and we simply might go up and say, listen, get to class, you know, you're already two minutes late. Well, it's, it's not uncommon for a student to take three or four steps and get their phone out and text mom, text dad, or text somebody saying, you know, they're fussing at me, they're, you know, and next thing you know, we get a call and, you know, so, so kids have always craved, we've all craved independence when we were mm -hmm. adolescents, when we were in high school, but the use of a cell phone and having a cell phone with you at all times has just heightened that, that, uh, <laughs> that opportunity to be independent, you know, so that's, that's an ongoing challenge. And, and uh, you know, they all, always the, the ever-changing expectations in education too. Like right now we have four different classes, 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th. And all four classes have a different set of requirements to graduate. And of course examinations uh, is, is, is getting to be a, you know, a prime. You've got to pass certain classes to graduate. Um, that's eventually going to replace FCAT. So it's always the, it's the, the changing times and, and being willing to adjust. You know, Leah talked about all the, the money and, and the financial things, but, but the time alone, I mean, I, I get to school at, at 6.30 in the morning and there's normally 25 to 35 folks already there before me at 6.30. So it really is a calling and, uh, and sometimes it's a challenge to remember that it is a calling because of, of all the distractions that we deal with in trying to make sure we, we provide a, a quality product in the classroom. What well, would you? I would think per, uh, <clears throat> parental involvement. With elementary school, I was at Umatilla High School for a few years and the parents are very involved there. They really are. Went to Tavares Elementary and the parents are involved in a different way. In high school, you're there because of sports. You're there because of academics. When they're in elementary, they're there because they want to be there. They love their children. Right. And we just need to get more parents there. We've implemented STEM night, which is the science, technology, engineering, and math, so we can become recognized as a, a STEM school. We've um, implemented math night, where parents have come in, and we've had different math stations set up, and they were, they've been active with learning different standards for each grade level, and we showed them how it can be taught in kindergarten all the way up to fifth grade what to expect. We had, had an FCAT night, so the parents can be there. They had their own lesson where their children went for another lesson. Mm -hmm. We've had a reading literacy night. We're just trying to implement all these programs so we can get the parents involved. We want them to know we're there for their education, but we're also there for a family. We're there to support them because so many times Families only see it as education. Yes, it is education, mm -hmm. but if the child isn't happy and the parent's not happy, they're not going to learn. Right. And the parents aren't going to be supportive to us. Mm -hmm. So, yes, we need, to do, we need to learn how to provide the support to the parents so they can be empowered to help their children because sometimes parents don't know how. And I'm not here to give parental classes. I'm here to provide educational support so you can be more productive, productive at home. So I find that to be one of our areas of great need mm -hmm. in the elementary school. Well, and it's so unique mm -hmm. with teaching in general. You are dealing with so many different things. You're not just teaching the kids. You're teaching the parents, and you're dealing with all of these outside things. And um, would you, what would, would you say, as a teacher, from, coming from a teacher standpoint, what, are, what is the biggest challenge that you have? Well, there are lots of challenges. <laughs> <laughs> but there are also a lot of great things, aspects mm -hmm. of teaching. Um, for, with the students, I believe that they have a lot of challenges coming into the classroom, so sometimes they're not as focused as they can be. And it's because they are, you know, even I teach elementary school, and this is throughout middle elementary, high school, um, these kids are coming home and sometimes their parents aren't home because they're working two and three jobs or sometimes parents don't have jobs at all. Um, there's a lot of homeless families in the area. Right now our school has got 72% free and reduced mm -hmm. lunch. We are a Title I school, 72%. <clears throat> I think that's where we are, I And believe. so right there tells you where we are economically Persist. and also um, emotionally too mm -hmm. because the children are going home the families don't have the money to support what the children want not what they always need but what right. they want and so the children come back and they're not always happy 
Yeah. So that, mm -hmm. that in itself really just poses some challenges. On, it's extra on the teacher because you have to really be there to support that child and find out what's going on. And sometimes they can't do their homework. And w teachers, most of the time, they'll just really get upset. Why is this child doing their homework? And, <laughs> but if you actually just speak with them, have a conversation, and ask them, and you can do other things. Hey, well, maybe you can stay after school mm -hmm. and do your homework or come a little earlier, and you can do your homework there. Um, so just really getting to know the kids because they are going through a lot of challenges, which in turn give up, gives us those challenges mm -hmm. as well. And as Bill can tell you, when I was at the high school, there <coughs> were so many students that were skipping. Mm -hmm. And they were skipping third and fourth period. And when I finally investigated to find out why, they were getting jobs to support their families. Mm -hmm. um, mom or dad might be incarcerated. They might be sick. Right. And they just had to go out and get a job to support the family. Yeah. So, so yeah. the challenges of the modern family really, really, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, come to us, and we understand that. You know, but in addition to all this, too, it's the number of assessments. Like right mm -hmm. now, um, virtually the entire month of April and May at, at our school is, is set aside for, for testing, okay? A lot of testing time. I think staff development with teachers, too, with all the new expectations given, a lot of times we leave teachers behind and just assume they'll make the adjustment. Well, they're a professional; they can they can get on. The, that's not the case. So, so um, keeping our staff and administrative staff, um, you know, up to date with the educational expectations, educational mm -hmm. structure, mm -hmm. or structures, the the delivery uh, strategies. I mean, a lot of times that's left behind, but but that's that's vital. That's that's mm -hmm. that's definitely. You know, we expect our teachers to do X, Y, and Z, but sometimes we forget to make sure they're equipped right, to do right. X, Y, and Z. So. Now you had mentioned, Bill, that it's a calling. That the mm -hmm. teachers feel like it's a calling, yeah. and I'm sure, and it's obvious. Um, Norris has, <laughs> has figured that out too. But, but keeping the motivation, I know with anything, you start out and you've got idealistic thoughts of right. things, and you can be so you're so much more willing to give to a project when you are excited about it, or or give to a job, or whatever it is. How do you, as leaders and, and administrators, how do you keep your teachers motivated? How do you inspire them? Yeah to maintain that feel of this is a calling and, and continue that level of education? Mm -hmm. it's, it's really difficult. I mean, uh, I've learned that at, at, in my early years that simply our body language, the way we walk the hallways, mm -hmm. uh, the way we speak, the way we smile or not smile, um, well, he smiled at you, but he didn't smile at me. You know, I've learned very early, yeah, the, the, the role of that. But it is a struggle, and I, I ask, and, and I understand people are watching us at all times. Mm -hmm. And and if, if and we have to model the expectations even when we have those type of days that say, you know, maybe this isn't what I want to do. But we all have to have some type of a strategy in place to deal with it. If it's simply going in your office for 10 minutes, and trying to regroup or taking a quick walk around the football field or the track. Everybody got to have, and that's what I suggest to my team, somebody has to have, everybody has to have some type of a strategy to catch their breath, mm -hmm. um, realize that this is really what we love to do, mm -hmm. okay? <laughs> and uh, remember that's what we love to do and, and go on because if you don't have those strategies because uh, the educational environment is very cynical. Um, there's a lot of negative perceptions about what we do. Right. And uh, so, so, yeah, you have to be tough-skinned and you have to be well-equipped with some type of a strategy. Uh, individually, it's different uh, mm -hmm. to, to deal with that. So I love that suggestion. <laughs> That's great. I mean, I, I also think that being a mentor, sometimes you need it yourself. You need to have somebody that you can go to um, who can pick you back up, you know, because everybody has their ups mm -hmm. and their downs. Um, but also being there for our other teachers that are kind of feeling like, hey, this is not really where I want to be and say, no, it is. You're doing a great job. And what can I help you with? And um, what is it that you're doing? Well, mm -hmm. maybe let's try something else and just being a mentor or finding that mentor, that person that you can lean on. And the mentor that recognizes that <clears throat> yes, your feelings are truthful and Absolutely. <laughs> that everybody feels those once in a yeah. while mm -hmm. and yeah. that this is what we can do to work through them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I want to remind everybody mm -hmm. that teachers are people too. <laughs> <laughs> and and they, they are just as sensitive as, as students. And yes. you know, that's another thing we get to, to observe. Um, it's very similar dealing with your staff and your students. Okay, the, it, it's the, the same challenges exist on both levels, you know. But, uh, 
but yeah, you have to have a strategy to, uh, to uh, you know, navigate those difficult times. Mm -hmm. Well, and I was raised by two educators, okay. so I can okay. attest to that, <laughs> and I'm sure. But what is it that, that keeps you wanting to do this? I mean, what is it that you like the best? What is it that makes mm -hmm. it worth it? In the morning when I see them and they go, Miss Fisher, Miss Fisher, and they're happy to see me, and that hug, mm -hmm. that keeps you going back. And when I was in the high school, when you just had the kids that would recognize, and once again, that appreciation, the appreciation of being there. And nothing's better than a hug or, you know, a nice smile, a welcoming in the morning or being out and observing in the classroom and seeing students doing a great job. Well, you have teachers that are taking it upon themselves to try new strategies. And you can see that we have our button on. I'm sure Bill had his on earlier, <laughs> yes, too. I did. <laughs> but we have our button, which is RUC2 Ready. And we started this initiative at the very beginning of the school year. And the, the C2 Ready can stand for Common Core, or it can stand for College and Career Ready. So we're really having our students look at what they're doing in the classroom and how we are pre preparing them for college or career. And the other day, there was a few, there were a few students in the classroom, and they were not really being prepared for college or a career and they were misbehaving <laughs> and this little boy looked at his teacher and said you know what mr swanson i don't think you're college or career ready you know the way they're behaving so it's really getting them to stop and think about what are we doing we're not here just to learn two plus two we're here mm -hmm. to learn how to work with other children we're doing a lot of cooperative grouping right now a lot of mm -hmm. pagan strategies because our community is expecting us to provide them with a workforce that can work with others. We all know that one of the main reasons why people get fired is because they can't work with right. others. And so we're really helping these students learn skills mm -hmm. where they are successful to come up with solutions and also to be kind to one another. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. One of the things that there's many things uh, that that you know you answer that question with. You know what. What is there that keeps you coming back? And because um, we know it's not the paychecks, <laughs> oh. we do know that. <laughs> Go ahead. Not for the hours, but anyway. <laughs> That's what I mean. <laughs> yeah. The the uh, I think one of the things that it's always I always number one look for highlights. I approach every day. Well, what are the highlights going to be today? You know, and I keep a journal. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, you know, it was a great. This made my day. This is the number one thing that I wrote in my journal. But seeing teachers grow mm -hmm. is is. Uh, is one of the real highlights for me. Number one, seeing teachers who have endured the transition at Leesburg High School, endured yes. the state occupation at Leesburg High School, they have stayed and made the adjustments and they are a much more effective teacher now after four plus years than they were even the veterans. And those are the folks that I really admire all, all of them, but those folks that have withstood mm -hmm. the pressure, withstood the, in a loving way, the occupation, okay, uh, and as simply improved as educators. Uh, that to me, that to me is very meaningful and worthwhile. In addition to the student growth too, and you know, uh, the focus on, on kids, the focus are, are you learning? You know, and mm -hmm. um, so that, you know, looking for highlights helps. Yeah, yes. without a doubt mm -hmm. it is the kids. And I, me personally, even if things in my personal life aren't going well, when I come into the classroom, it's like a whole, different world with mm -hmm. the students because it's all about them and I can put everything else aside and just focus solely on them and you know getting to know them and educating them. Yeah. There's a saying that working with the kids keeps you young. <laughs> working with the adults puts all these gray hairs in your head you know and there's some truth to that but, uh, but uh, the, the kids really is I think that's why we're all here because at the end Absolutely. of the day it's, it's about them and, and uh, and it's about all of them, not a select mm -hmm. few, right. not just the ones that come from very, you know, a supportive backgrounds. It's about all of them. Limited English, learning disability, mm -hmm. whatever, it's about all of them. Getting them all right. And you mentioned the C2, are you C2 ready? And, mm -hmm. and I know that that is a big, I went to a meeting about the Common Core yes. initiative in, in the schools. And, and I'll be honest, it really, um, it excited me. I mean, I was very, mm -hmm. you know, it, I was excited about this coming to Lake County because I felt like, we're really moving forward with that. How has that changed our schools, or, or how will it change? I, you know, I know it's still new. Mm -hmm. You want to go ahead? Um, yes, and I know at our school we've been doing a lot of great things. I'm sure it's across the board, but um, and during the morning announcements, there's somebody from the leadership team who will tell the kids, okay, this is how you can focus on being college and career ready today. You need to dress appropriately. You want to make sure you're looking sharp and ready to learn. Um, they've spoken about different colleges. In my classroom, my table groups are now called universities. 
So mm -hmm. there's like UCF and USF, and so that's how we refer to the students. So that way they're getting to, they're listening to all these different colleges, and this is something that they're growing up with. This is their grade. So by the time they get to high school, they've been hearing it all along. I think that's a great mm -hmm. thing, preparing them for that future. And this is a national incentive too, or right, initiative, and our state has agreed to be a part of it. And I'm hoping that every state will, because when we have we have so many students that move or come to us. This past week, we received 19 new students. And you think about where they might have come from. If we were all on the same common core standards, wherever they came from, the first grade teachers would be doing the same thing as our mm -hmm. first grade teachers. Right. So no matter what state, what county you move to, we would be doing the same thing. We would be expected to do the same thing. Well, and what could you tell us as, te as parents? Uh, you mm -hmm. know, I'm a parent, I have two kids, like I said, one in elementary, one in middle school. What do I need to be doing to help you all as educators? I would say the number one, make sure you, you, you monitor the progress of your students, of your kids. You can, you can monitor now. And, I mean, when I was in school, A's and mm -hmm. B's and C's, but A's and B's and C's aren't necessarily an indicator of student growth. Right. Are, there are standardized test measures now that really can tell you how much a student has learned uh, or stayed the same or even went backwards. Mm -hmm. So I would, really, I would really look at standardized data FCAT data, mm -hmm. uh, see if your, your student has made a, lear uh, a, your, a learning gain for that year or, or more. Uh, so I, I would advise all parents, I mean, every parent, the way we all grew up, A, B, C, D, and that's all we really look at, right. but there's a whole lot more to that right now, a whole lot more to that. What progress is really being made? Um, we establish um, mid-year data, baseline data, end-of-the-year data. Like right now, I can tell you how much our kids have grown since the beginning of the year because of consistent benchmark testing. So, uh, so I would say my Knowing advice- about would, those things. Yes, mm -hmm. about the, the benchmark testing and about the, uh, you know, the, FCATs, uh, the FCAT numbers, in addition to all the teacher indications, A, B, C, and Ds, and those type of things. And you can also go on the school website and go into the curriculum department. And they do have blueprints or task cards, which will tell you exactly what is expected to be taught during the time frame during certain dates. Right. So parents, if you're not receiving a newsletter every mm -hmm. week, because in elementary school, a lot of teachers take it upon themselves to send newsletters right, home, right. and it will give the spelling list, and mm -hmm. it will give the you know, <laughs> topics that they're covering. But if you're a parent that doesn't receive that, or even if you do and you would like more information, you can always go on the site, look at that information, go to the library, find more books to read, mm -hmm. do more activities, ask higher thinking questions, please. You know, have your students really explain mm -hmm. how they learned something, why they learned it, why it was important, not just a yes or no. Don't accept the one word answer. No. <laughs> they really need to go in depth and, you know, support. because, support. you know, support. Really provide that mm -hmm. information. Be supportive because they need that. That is going to be part of their assessment. And once again, that's what employers are looking for. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. The big buzzword, evidence, showing evidence mm -hmm. of evidence and why. Artifacts. Why is it yes. that way? You have to give me evidence. Why do you pick that? that evidence of so? your student's work. Check out <laughs> writing samples. Check out how mm -hmm. it's graded. Well, and I can't believe it, but we literally are out of time. <laughs> I mean, I can believe it, <laughs> but we are out of time. But thank you so much, thank really, you. for what you do. And, thank and congratulations, you. all yeah, three of you. Thank you. Thank you.